Okay, our viewer question today is, what type of D3 supplement do you recommend? There are so many different types that are available. Vitamin D3. Uh, when I was a boy in medical school, we were taught the only function of vitamin D is that it helps us absorb calcium from our food into our bloodstream so we don't get rickets. That was about it. If you're going to have vitamin D, you're going to get rickets, your bones get all curvy, and end of story. That was the vitamin D story. Well, now time and science have shown what a narrow view of vitamin D that really was. Uh, the reality is that vitamin is involved in hundreds of different reactions throughout the body from brain health to immune health to membrane integrity. You, we really need to keep significant amounts of vitamin, C in our uh, vitamin D in our bloodstream. And in the strictest sense, vitamin D is not really a vitamin, it's a hormone that our body makes when sunlight falls on our skin. Uh, it, the molecule, uh, the precursor molecule is formed, goes through our uh, kidney and is activated into the active form of vitamin D. And a million years ago, uh, out on the African savanna, where we're all running around naked in the sunshine, foraging for roots and tubers, uh, vitamin D deficiency was not an issue. Uh, there's uh, plenty of vitamin D from the skin, uh, from the sunlight falling on our skin wasn't an issue. Uh, everybody's skin looked like an old suitcase by age 40, but you got eaten by a leopard at age 42. It didn't, didn't matter. People weren't upset about skin cancer back then. But now we're so afraid of the sun, we hide from the sun. We spend our days inside in computers. And when we do go outside, we put on hats and sunscreen because we're afraid of photo aging and, and skin cancer. And for that reason, the amount of sunlight falling on people's skin who's taking a big nosedive and vitamin D deficiency seems to be fairly widespread. Uh, so what do you do? Well, you take some oral vitamin D. So uh, what form do we want to uh, take it in? Uh, most commercial vitamin D that you see added to milk, et cetera, uh, this is made from lanolin from sheep, uh, and therefore it's not truly a vegan product. Uh, people say, well, you don't have to kill the sheep to get the, the lanolin. Uh, but yeah, but uh, let's get real about the wool industry. No, none of those uh, sheep die of old age after five, six years of being sheared. Their, their wool gets all tough and scrubby and uh, their sense of the slaughterhouse turned into mutton there. It's a slaughter industry, <clears throat> just like the dairy industry that, that milks cows. Uh, it's a slaughter industry. The dairy barn's a short stopping off place on the way at the slaughterhouse for a few years of milk and calves. The same way that the wool barn is a short stopping off place uh, to, uh, to harvest the wool and the, uh, the lanolin. But again, it's a slaughter industry. And so when you're buying that wool product or the lanolin, you're paying, you're subsidizing that industry. And, and it really is one of those archaic slaughter industries that should disappear along with whaling. So that's why the vegan community is concerned about the source of vitamin D. As I said, most of it comes from commercially produced lanolin. But if you want to free yourself from that and not support that industry, you need a vegan source, a completely plant-based source of vitamin D. Uh, it was hard to find till someone realized that uh, when mushrooms are growing and they're exposed to ultraviolet light, uh, they produce vitamin D on the surface of the mushroom there. And so most vegan vitamin D uh, is produced by uh, shining ultraviolet light on mushrooms uh, as they're growing. And uh, this works. Uh, the form that comes out is mostly vitamin D2. It's not quite as bioactive, but it's absolutely active. Uh, and that's the, the form that most folks should be consuming. And the dosage is about 2,000 international units of vitamin D uh, a day, well, vitamin D2 or D3. The difference uh, isn't that great between them if you're taking them on a pretty regular basis. So back to the viewer's question. So which vitamin D uh, preparation is the best? Um, there are so many on the market today. I, I'm not going to be able to, uh, uh, to give you a specific recommendation. I have no commercial tie-in with any vitamin company, anything like that. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is uh, look on the labels and you want to see vitamin D2, at least 2,000 international units per the dose you're taking, whether it's one capsule, two capsule, whatever, but you want to be cruising around 2,000 international units. I think it's about 40 micrograms of, uh, of vitamin D2. And, and I'm told now that there's even a, vitamin, a vegan vitamin D3. 
And that's good news. Uh, again, the dosage would be the same, 2,000 units of vegan, either vitamin D2 or vitamin D3. I can't give you a, a real call in between individual brands, but that's what you want to look for on the label, uh, at least 2,000 international units of D2 or D3. And get out in the sunshine as much as you can. We need it, not, not only to keep our skin healthy, you, you know, we're not supposed to turn into these pale white creatures inside. Uh, you need a little sunshine, but it helps your mental and emotional state. It helps your pineal gland. It, you know, we are natural creatures and we shouldn't be cut off from the natural world like we are now. Uh, we suffer from NDD, nature deficit disorder. And one manifestation of that is low vitamin D levels. So get out in the sunshine, take a walk out in the, in the morning sun for half an hour. You don't need sunscreen or anything. Uh, it won't hurt you. It'll, it'll do you good. So uh, that's the take on vitamin D. Don't ignore it, but uh, don't hide from the sun either and, and get some vegan vitamin D. It's getting more and more common and you ought to do just fine. The only thing I would add is, um, cause that's such a good point about the lanolin and therefore it not being vegan is um, when people are out there reading labels to keep an eye out too for uh, the capsules being made of gelatin. Cause that's often the case as well. Right. Um, but other than that, thank you so much for your wisdom, Dr. Clapper, on that. And I hope that helps everyone out there that's curious about their D3 supplements. So thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see everybody next time. Take care. Hi, everyone. Dr. Michael Clapper here announcing our new format for our Q&A with Dr. K. Annie Hagen will be asking me one question that's been sent in by our viewers. So if you want to see if your question is getting answered, do join us for our Q&A with Dr. K right here. Hope to see you then.